So all I did here was I skinned the leg, just to expose the joint on the back here. So you got a longer portion. So I'm gonna cut this off right here. And I'll show you later why I'm doing this. And on the front, same thing. That joint is up higher, it's up here. So you got a shorter stub to play with. But I got them skinned out. And I'll cut that joint. And you wanna skin it enough so you get a good portion of that joint. Cause I don't use a uh, gambrel. So it's easier to just stick the joints right in there and uh, lift it right up by the joints. And there's a reason for that. It's for doing the pads, for skinning out the, uh, the claws and whatnot. But I'll get to that later here. All right. I got them up on the hoist here. So you can see all the joints are tapered. You cut them right at the joint. I don't saw them, I cut the knuckle out, or the joint out. Now you're just left with these little bones here and they're the same thing they're tapered right so when i'm done skinning the whole wolf out i will hang it on these cables here i'll hang this joint and then i can pull down and skin this whole pad out i'll show you here eventually so i'll split the hide all the way down to the pad here and then i won't go any further than that i'm just gonna completely skin it out without splitting it Nice with the weight of the hide on here, it uh, helps to expose where you got to cut, just by the weight of it. Eventually I'll have to do some pulling here, but a dew claw. I don't want to ruin my good knife on here, so I got this other cheaper knife here to keep for those parts of it. These Havilons are nice for doing this stuff. You just simply have to touch and it's cut. Any good sharp knife works too. Your buddies from the States brought me this knife and perfect for doing this kind of stuff. Another good one that works is these uh, scapulas. You can buy these from a uh, butcher shop or whatever. I think uh, I actually got these from Halford Hides out of Edmonton. And the blades are cheap. They're basically the same attachment as a Havilon. And quite a bit cheaper, so they work very well. So what I'm looking for here is, uh, <clears throat> when I'm skinning these out, is we're going down to the third joint. So there's a joint here, so we're going to go down to the third joint for every toe. And the first ones you encounter is the outside ones, because they're shorter. So you got one joint here, one joint there. So the next one is where we'll be cutting. Should be right there. Like I say, these Havilons are nice because as soon as you touch her, you're doing something. You start slicing too much in here and there we go. So one joint here, one joint there, third joint you're cutting. So one, two, and then there's a third one here. I just present the tip to it and it kind of does the work. There you go. Well, these other ones are quite a bit further down, but usually what I start doing at this point, before I get too far away, is start getting rid of this uh, pad. There's a big ball of fat here, and there's two on each side. But if you're 
after a bit of practice you can kind of get it all at once so I just get it started here and I find the best way is to have a pair of needle nose pliers and just touch it and you, see, you can see the color change as you're getting closer to the pad there's kind of a little bowl here where it goes in Now for the last two claws, I'll just loosen this up a little bit here and yard on it pretty hard and uh, I'll go right down to the last joint. Your last joint's right there. Does a nice job that way. There's nothing left in the pad here. A chunk of fat is gone. Very well furred. No shoulder mite or nothing. I got all the lips, everything's attached. Everything's split. All the ears are split. Very nice wolf. Y'all get this one tanned up, like I say, and wall hanger, and might even sell him after he's tanned. Some little basics that I do that make it a little easier for me when I'm skinning. A lot of people uh, that have trapped in the past got their own ways, but not saying this is the way to do it just the way I do it and it might be helpful to you so I'm wearing this head camera and I hate to wear it because it kind of moves all over the place I'll try not to move around too much so for the front legs on a lynx what I do is I'll, I'll give a slice and I pull down towards the claws towards the pad of course there's a sharp knife and uh this is a knife that I just use for bones. It's actually a cheap, it used to be a kitchen knife and I cut it down and built my own skinning knife. I used this for years, but it's a, a cheap knife and it's dulls easily, but it's easily easy to sharpen too. So this is my bone knife. I use it for these dirty jobs. So like I said, I'm pulling down towards the, the paw and then give it a clean cut right around for the front. So I'll, uh, I brushed it all up, make sure there's no burrs or no branches or anything that'll give me some issues when I'm plushing. This is a little trick you might like. So when I'm cutting, I just get to the back of the, uh, the joint here. So there's the tendon right there. You don't want to cut that or else you'll be chasing it when you pull the hide down. Different on a wolf, but uh, this year I'll be pulling the hide down. And if you cut this tendon and you start pulling the hide down, you'll be cursing yourself. So what I'm doing here is I'm on each side of the tendon. I just split right up and I grab the hide and I pull it away from that tendon and I'll slice away from it. And I pinch, pull, and then I just slice away from it. And I just pinch, pull, slice away from it. And I'll do that all the way around. I just spin them around. And then eventually, it's all free. If you grab it and slice this way, you cut all the hair. 
This way it makes a nice cut and you're more in control of it. This is just a kind of a problem area to start with and it's been quite a bit easier for me this way. Again, this is the way I do it to each his own. Just thought I'd throw it in there. All right, since I'm talking about tips and tricks. So lynx, they're pretty easy to pull down. You get into coyotes, especially when you're doing the front legs, it's a bit harder to pull down. And then you're, uh, it seems like it's always slippery and you can't get a good hold on them. Like I say, these lynx are a bit easier, right? Good trick is sawdust. You just give it a little dab of sawdust and it's like you gain 50 horsepower. It's so much easier. You'll notice it right away. Sawdust does not hurt nothing. So I'll grab the screwdriver and I go from the inside and then just wiggle it around. You don't want to force it through and eventually it'll go through. And then you just pull down. On these links you don't want to pull too hard. So right now I'm pulling down but what's holding me up is the head here. So if I keep pulling I'm going to rip the shoulder off. So what I'm going to do is just loosen this off a little and then loosen this off and eventually I'll get right to where I cut the front paws. The wolves are different because I skin the legs all the way up to, to here. But for these, see I'm already where I cut that leg off. I could have pulled that out, but... Now that I got it at this point here, I'm just going to loosen this little part here because I know it's telling me where I can cut. A little more. You notice how I'm not cutting that artery. I'll just grab this hide put my knee on it and pull right down on it and it'll strip it right down to the ears and give it a couple of tugs there we go it pulled it all the way down and there's your ears so I'm gonna switch knives here because this is my good knife I don't want to start running bones with this one I'm gonna go back to this cheap knife what I do is I pinch the ear off, and if you find that it's too slippery, just a bit of sawdust. And you can really grab it. And then I cut straight towards the head. No angle this way, I cut right to the head. So you can see these two arteries here, and that's what your snare is going after. And you can see this one's busted on this side. And that's what takes them out so quick. So once they're skinned here, I'm going to go ahead and take these quarters off. And that'll be next year's bait for the bait sticks. So you just go in right behind the front shoulder. And then what I'll do with this here, cut the muscle. And then it folds up nicely. The back legs are a bit different. I'll show you what I do here once I get to them. So I'm just going to cut this right to the joint. The joint right there. And it comes right off. So before I cut it loose, I'm going to go over here and grab the hind leg or the pad basically and then cut this tendon and then I'm going to cut this front muscle here. What that does is I can fold it right over and it makes for a perfect bait stick just like so and I'll do the same for this one done deal already thinking about next winter so this part here what I do is uh, I'll freeze them this this way cut the head off you can get rid of that if you want but i'll freeze these here just because i don't have time to play around with them here since i got so many hides to skin um and then i'll thaw them out and i'll cut this belly out and i'll use this for my lure so i'll cut this belly out when it's partially frozen and it'll be just like a little football you cut everything you can get all the the organs and it's still partially frozen 
you get an axe or a big knife and you dice it up as small as you can throw it in a bucket and uh, keep that for a year or so makes a great lure just add some glycerin to it and then the rest of the carcass here when you do that it's good for uh, bait sticks for uh, link sets Yeah, so they fold up nicely when you cut those tendons and I usually try and get four to six per bag four seems to be a nice number I mean not too much in a little grocery bag bags that I buy for marking whatever because I got to register those links so I got to know what's a female what's a male and where it came from and that's how I mark these bags. Links four pieces. Links four pieces. And I know that's my bait for next year. Throw that in the freezer and we're good to go. One thing I want to mention is uh, I put a video out the way I build my snares. And I use 1 16th cable for uh, everything actually. 7x7 seven seven for links and 1x19 for wolves. And... Uh, I can't stress enough that you have to buy really good quality cable. I don't know if you can see this, um, but there's a corkscrew in this cable. And that's what happens when you buy cheap cable. There's no label on the spool that I bought from a certain place, which I was very disappointed. And uh, thank God it was just a 100 foot roll because I needed some. And it breaks very easily. The braking strength is not there. So you do not use this cable, the cheaper stuff. I buy the Korean made, way better quality. And it uh, doesn't have that corkscrew to it. You can't, you can't set a snare properly this way here. As soon as it closes, it'll want to jump off his nose. You can't do anything with this cable, it's garbage basically. For snares anyways. I'd put a little video out on uh, how I build my snares and uh, I'm using these 1 16th ferrules, 1 16th cable for my wolf snares and lynx snares. But I just uh, want to say that uh, make sure you get good quality components. I buy my stuff from Dan Beaver Supplies and they are super quick at uh, under delivery, phenomenal service and they're not sponsoring me. I'm just happy with their service. And where I got them before with my supplies, uh, I had ordered some, I had a whole bunch of 116 ferals. I ended up throwing them out because their 116 feral was very light compared to this one. And there was even some 364, I think it is, a cable that's smaller than 116 mixed in with these, the 116 ferals. So I had even lighter components on the end. So when it comes to wolves, you want to make sure you got good quality stuff. Just something to be aware of. These ferals are way better quality. Sure, you can buy some on Amazon as well, but I I don't know what the quality would be there. So I would kind of stay away from that cheaper stuff. So a feral's not a feral when it comes to the same cable size. There's differences I've learned by experience. And if you don't have a, a crimper for your ferals, you can flatten them. I've done that for years. But you just got to be aware that you don't flatten them to a point where you flatten your cable. And it damages your cable and creates a weak point right at the edge of this ferrule. So if you flatten your cable too much, you can uh, create a weak point there. Again, the biggest thing is use quality components. I've had bad experiences in the past and not just with 116 cable, I've had it with the 332 cable where I couldn't believe uh, certain things broke and it was just not right and it was just a matter of low quality products. So if you use high quality stuff, you, you minimize your chances of having any issues. Just thought I'd throw it in there. Since I'm in the shop here, I thought I'd bring a few more things up I uh, drew out the pattern here of our one of my uh, wolf traps this is the no BS the bridger number nine will be you know a bit squarer but I use this to cut uh, fiberglass 
um, bug screen just mesh and I use that for underneath and above the trap I've used wax paper as well I find the fiberglass mesh is not as noisy if they happen to step over here it's not as crunchy until they trigger the trap another thing I'm trying is these uh, compostable bags they're very light and as you can see the outlay of my trap here that goes all the way up to here these are 7.5 liter bags and the trap fits just perfectly inside of them so I'm just trying these out and I'll see how it goes you gotta watch you don't get any that have scent on them these have a little bit of a scent which worries me but just from boxing but I got another box at the dollar store very cheap and uh, there's no scent on those mixed up some wolf urine so I pick this up and wherever I can along the trail and label it mix some glycerin and I even put a bit of food coloring in there just yellow food coloring even though wolf urine is not uh, typically right yellow but it's just a more of an eye catcher it's more of a scent and I couldn't help to uh, listen in on the conversation that uh, a woman was having with another one in the, uh, the office there and they were saying how their dogs were peeing all over the place in the yard and the one woman said well you should go to the pet store and try this stuff here there's different types potty here is what this one's called and uh, you spray that in one spot in your yard and and the dogs will always always go and pee in that on that one spot so it keeps them from going all over the yard so i thought i'd give this a try for wolves so i tried it on a few sets but i haven't caught anything yet i just uh tried it so i'll keep it posted if that works or not <laughs> little tricks anyway.